Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here. I'm going to start a brand new series today called How I Got This Shot. And in this series, I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite images from the past few years and talk about the exact method that I used to get the shot. I'll walk you through uh, the specific approach that I took, the gear I selected for the shot, uh, how I dealt with the light and how I evaluated that particular scene, and the specific techniques that I used in order to bring the shot to life. I'm going to start with a photo that I like to call the glowing iceberg. I shot this photo a few years ago in mid-October out at the Kinnick Glacier, and this is one of my favorite locations to shoot. Uh, I've been out there and shot photos all four seasons uh, numerous times throughout the past few years, and there's always something really cool to photograph out there, and, and every time I go, there's always it's always different. And that's one of the cool things about visiting a location again and again. No matter where you live, no matter what kind of scene you're photographing, uh, you'll often find that vis revisiting the same location will give you a different look and, and sometimes vastly different photos. And that can also depend on the particular mood and the particular creative ideas that you have on any given day that might vary from the last time you were there. The previous evening, I had been up in my little Cessna to shoot some aerial photos over the mountains, and I had watched the moon rise while I was up there in the plane. And the actual full moon was scheduled for the next day. So my plan was to go camp out overnight at the glacier and hopefully capture some really cool photos of the moon rise, the full moon rise over the icebergs. So I packed up my camping gear and my photo gear and I flew out to the glacier and I landed on one of the gravel bars and then I hiked out over the moraine and I set up my tent right on the shore of the glacier lagoon, right at the water's edge. And one of the things that struck me when I first got out there was that the beach was full of icebergs. In the summertime, all of these icebergs are floating in the glacier lake, uh, and they kind of get pushed towards the shore as the summer goes on. And then at the end of the summer, the water recedes, the water levels lower, and a lot of these icebergs get beached. They get stranded on the shore where they live out the rest of their days. So what began as pure white snowfall on the nearby mountainsides maybe 100 years ago, uh, slowly in time, all of the snow gets pushed and compressed into ice chunks, which eventually end up on this massive ice sheet of the glacier. And they push and carve their way down the landscape. And so over the decades, the glacier keeps pushing forward. Uh, and eventually that one piece of ice uh, f reaches the end of the line and it calves off into the glacier lagoon, uh, where it spends the next couple of years bobbing and floating as maybe an apartment-sized block of ice and slowly melting and eventually uh, melts into something smaller that ultimately gets stranded on the shore, and that's what you're looking at right here. And so this very long journey and transformation eventually comes to an end. And so these icebergs are going to sit on shore all winter, and then when the warmer weather comes next summer, uh, they're going to melt, and that's, that'll be it. And that moisture will evaporate and fall as new snow on those peaks again, and the cycle will happen all over again. And so I quickly unpacked my gear and began what turned out to be an hours-long immersive photography session that went well into the night. I had a pretty small selection of gear with me, my X-Series body, my Fuji X-T2 at the time, uh, and a concise set of lenses that gave me a wide, middle, and long vantage points. And this is how I operate. I usually travel with one body, maybe a second body. These days I'll often carry the X100V with me as well but I usually only carry about three to four lenses that give me that wide, middle, long set of vantage points uh, with very little overlap. I see a lot of photographers out there who carry way too much gear. In fact, a lot of those guys would be very surprised by the size of my camera pack and how small it is uh, and how little gear I have in there. I did have a tripod with me, my Gitzo Traveler. Uh, this is my primary choice for tripods when I'm in the backcountry. Uh, I think it offers a high degree of stability for the reduced size and weight of the tripod. Ultimately, I like to go light and fast with my gear. Uh, I think that when you encumber yourself too much, you, you have too much overlap in your creative options, and that slows you down, and not to mention the fact that more gear means a heavier pack, and that's going to slow you down as well. Why complicate things? Why carry six or eight lenses when you could carry three lenses that give you wide, middle, long? As you probably know, when the moon is full, it rises right around the same time as the sunset. And so this allows you to capture photos of the moon rising over the landscape with the light of the setting sun. However, the exact time and angle of the moon rise uh, varies by latitude and time of year. So my goal was to use the light from the setting sun to capture the moon rising over the icebergs, only it didn't work out that way. On this particular night in Anchorage, Alaska, 
the moon rose about 15 minutes after the sun. And during this time of year in Alaska, the sun sets really quickly. And so by the time the moon rose, I no longer had very much ambient light on my scene. And so this is what I was faced with. As you can see, uh, the, if I shot the moon by itself, I had you know tons of definition. But if I tried to combine it with the landscape, there was just way too much contrast because the moon was so much brighter than the landscape. Now the haze on the horizon actually caused a really wonderful, cool looking effect that had a really warm glow to the moon. And on, on first glance, you might actually think this is the sun, but this is the moon uh, with a little bit of haze on the horizon. I was a little disappointed that I wasn't able to get what I had hoped to get with my camera, but that's just the way it works sometimes. So I shifted into a more adaptive mindset and, and tried to use my creativity to make use of what light I did have present. I quickly discovered that if I exclude the moon or at least de-accentuate the moon and just kind of focus on that glow, uh, that gave me a much better, more workable scene without too much contrast. As you can see in this photo, there was just so much contrast. Uh, and here I actually brought this entire scene up uh, by photographing this in RAW and processing later. And eventually the moon rose high enough into the sky that I began to lose that warm glow. And so I felt this was kind of a good time to shift gears. And besides, I was getting hungry. It was well past dinner time. Uh, so I walked back to my little campsite. As I often do when I stay overnight at these kinds of places, I built a little campfire on the shore of the glacier lake. And I proceeded to unpack my stove and, and make myself a freeze-dried meal and eat the rest of my cookies that I, my wife had sent with me. Around 11 p.m., uh, my, camp, my little campfire was still going and I had a nice full belly. Uh, and I started to get the urge to shoot again. I had some more creative ideas inside me. And as I sat there and watched my little campfire burn, I became very intrigued by the differing contrast levels of the light and the color tones uh, between the night air and the cool ice and the warmth of the fire. So I pulled out my tripod again and I put my 14 millimeter wide angle on the camera on my Fuji and started to make some more pictures. And I shot a few different vantage points uh, of this particular series, some closer, some far away. Uh, but eventually I settled upon uh, this particular vantage point and I shot a number of scenes with a shutter speed of about a quarter second. Uh, I was able to get these, these rising blurry sparks that were coming out of the campfire. And as you can see, uh, most of these photos in the series are the same, uh, but there was one particular shot where it had this dramatic blur of a, a piece of ember, you know, flying through the air as the fire crackled. And that one ended up being my favorite final shot of the series. I really love this shot because I think it has a very otherworldly feel to it. Whenever I show this photo at, during my workshops and presentations, it usually elicits quite a response. And a lot of that is because people simply can't figure out quite what they're looking at. You know, not everyone has built a campfire while camping on the shores of a glacier lake surrounded by icebergs. Uh, and so it's my job to show you exactly what that looks like. And I take that job very seriously. And so I work very hard to bring these kinds of images to you. The dramatic warmth of this scene is, is a largely what makes the shot. Our eyes are often drawn to the brightest and the warmest colors in a scene. And so this gives you a very strong overload of these very warm colors that draw your eye right into the scene. And they also contrast very nicely with the predominantly cool colors surrounding it. In addition, this one glowing iceberg makes for a very prominent and very easily defined subject. And it sits within a position of prominence uh, amid this series of icebergs that around it. And so there's a, a little bit of a repeating pattern motif that we see in the shot as well. And there's enough information in the scene. There are enough different subject elements that take your eye around different parts of the frame as you explore the photo. But this has so much prominence, you always end up coming back to that. So this was one of many photos I shot during this incredibly productive, probably 12 hour session of shooting photos. One of the most productive and extended sessions I've ever had. Uh, but that's not what stands out for me when I look at this picture. When I look at this photo, I just remember being out there uh, all by myself in this amazing, rugged and dreamlike landscape all night long. I remember the incredible sense of solitude and silence. I remember just how special and unique this particular situation was for me. This photo is very unique, and to me it's the perfect example of those rare magical times that we as photographers can experience when we're out in the world with our cameras. It's also a photo that no one has ever shot before, and nor will anyone ever shoot this photo. I won't ever shoot this photo again. Although it's possible to capture a similar shot, this particular location will never look 
exactly like that again. It was such a fleeting moment. A few months later, this iceberg was gone. It had melted. It was, it was history. And while there might be more October evenings that have similar scenes out there at that particular glacier, there's no time in history where it's going to look exactly like it did when I shot this photo. And to me, that's one of the most magical things about photography and about our own individual pursuit of making creative images. So as we end, I'd like to leave you with a few takeaways. Number one is keep exploring. Keep going out into the world and putting yourselves into unique situations and places. And I promise you, when you do that, great imagery will follow. Sometimes these places are far away, but sometimes these places can be right in your own backyard and right in your own neighborhood. It just takes being willing to step off the trail a few feet and looking at the scene in a different way than you usually do. From a compositional standpoint, look for subjects that have a good contrast between warm and cool colors. This is one of the most dramatic things that you can accentuate in a photograph, and it's one of the things that's going to get your viewer to draw them in and get them really interested in the subject matter. And wherever possible, take these contrasts to the extreme when you can. And the last thing I'll leave you with is the notion that while it can be very satisfying to shoot bucket list type images, nothing beats the creative and immersive rewards of capturing a truly unique image, something that only you have seen and photographed. So above all, strive for this in your photography. It's these types of photos that will in the long run end up being the most memorable to you as photographers and artists. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed this little mini workshop, please check out my Behind the Landscape ebook where I explore 15 more images uh, in this kind of depth and analysis. I think this kind of teaching style can go a long way towards helping you expand your own skills and your own techniques uh, and your own approaches towards creating great imagery. So here's a discount code that you can use to get my Behind the Landscape ebook at a special price. Please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. You can find me on social media and Patreon at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can visit my website and blog as well. So thanks again for watching. Have fun with your camera out there, and I'll see you next time.